Most of the time, the media focuses on spacecraft from big names like SpaceX's Dragon Capsule or Boeing's problematic Starliner. But there are other spacecraft that are just as important, if not more so, that fly under the radar, especially those developed by smaller, newer companies. A prime example of this is the Dream Chaser. This space plane has been in development for years, steadily moving closer to its highly anticipated launch, and now, finally, the time for its launch has arrived. Today, we're diving into everything you need to know about this unique spacecraft, why it stands out from the crowd, and what makes its upcoming debut so exciting. Before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for all the latest updates on the space industry and more. After NASA retired the Space Shuttle program in 2011, the United States faced a significant challenge in maintaining reliable access to space. Without a spacecraft capable of launching astronauts from American soil, NASA had to rely completely on Russian Soyuz rockets for transportation to the International Space Station. This dependency created not only logistical issues, but also significant costs with each seat on a Soyuz rocket costing NASA around $80 million. To regain independent access to space, NASA initiated the Commercial Crew Program in 2010, aiming to work with private companies to develop safe, reliable, and cost-effective ways to transport astronauts to and from the ISS. Several companies were selected as part of the Commercial Crew Program, with each taking a unique approach to meet NASA's requirements. The main players that emerged under the program were SpaceX, Boeing, and Sierra Nevada Corporation, each working on different spacecraft, SpaceX's Crew Dragon, Boeing's Starliner, and Dream Chaser. SpaceX received a $2.6 billion contract from NASA in 2014 to develop Crew Dragon, a spacecraft based on its existing Dragon cargo vehicle, which had been successfully transporting supplies to the International Space Station. Crew Dragon was designed specifically for crewed missions and includes safety features such as a launch escape system that can carry astronauts away from the rocket in an emergency. It also features touchscreen controls and can carry up to seven astronauts. SpaceX worked quickly and by May 2020, it successfully launched its first crewed mission, known as Demo-2. This marked the first time astronauts launched from American soil since the retirement of the space shuttle, fulfilling SpaceX's promise to NASA and demonstrating that the spacecraft was reliable and ready for regular crewed missions. Boeing took a different approach with its Starliner, receiving a larger $4.2 billion contract from NASA in 2014. Starliner, designed to carry up to seven passengers or a mix of crew and cargo, was built to provide flexible transportation options for the International Space Station. However, the program encountered multiple technical issues and delays. In December 2019, during Starliner's first uncrewed test flight, known as Orbital Flight Test, software problems prevented the spacecraft from reaching its intended orbit, which meant it couldn't dock with the ISS as planned. Boeing has since faced ongoing issues, including further delays and significant cost overruns, ultimately reporting over $1.8 billion in losses on the program. Despite receiving the largest amount of funding from NASA, Boeing struggled to deliver a reliable spacecraft. By October 2024, reports indicated that Boeing was even considering selling its space division, which includes the Starliner program, due to financial challenges and setbacks. Meanwhile, Sierra Nevada Corporation took a unique approach with the Dream Chaser. Originally, Dream Chaser was designed as a crewed space plane for the commercial crew program. It wasn't selected for NASA's crew missions, but its innovative design allowed it to continue as a potential cargo transport vehicle. In 2016, NASA awarded Sierra Nevada Corporation a contract under the Commercial Resupply Services to program to deliver cargo to the International Space Station. This contract allowed Dream Chaser to move forward, focusing on cargo-only missions rather than human transportation. Dream Chaser is notably different from both Crew Dragon and Starliner. Instead of a capsule design, Dream Chaser is a lifting body spacecraft, which means its shape helps generate lift during re-entry. 
measuring approximately 30 feet in length, about one quarter the size of the retired space shuttle orbiters, Dream Chaser's lifting body design allows it to glide back to Earth and land on a runway. This design is particularly advantageous because it enables Dream Chaser to land on any conventional runway worldwide, making it highly flexible and allowing for fast access to returned cargo and experiments. The spacecraft is also equipped with a thermal protection system, similar to the heat-resistant tiles used on the space shuttle, which protects it from the intense heat during re-entry. Dream Chaser's aerodynamic structure and control surfaces enable it to maneuver precisely during its descent, ensuring a controlled and safe landing. Dream Chaser has a high degree of reusability, with each vehicle designed to complete at least 15 missions. It can carry up to 5,500 kilograms of cargo to low Earth orbit, including to the International Space Station, and can handle both pressurized and unpressurized cargo. This capability makes Dream Chaser highly versatile, as it can transport a wide variety of payloads such as scientific experiments, supplies, and equipment. One key feature that sets Dream Chaser apart from capsule-based spacecraft like Crew Dragon and Starliner is its runway landing capability. Unlike capsules that splash down in the ocean, which can subject cargo to significant impact forces, Dream Chaser's landing is much gentler. This smooth runway landing is ideal for delicate or sensitive cargo, such as biological samples or medical research materials, which need careful handling after returning from space. This landing capability is particularly beneficial for scientists who want quick access to their samples and data after the spacecraft's return. As of November 2024, Dream Chaser is in its final stages of preparation for its first mission. The spacecraft, named Tenacity, and its cargo module, Shooting Star, have recently completed environmental testing at NASA's Neil Armstrong Test Facility in Ohio. These tests included vibration and thermal vacuum assessments, which are critical for ensuring that Dream Chaser can withstand the conditions it will face during launch, orbit, and re-entry. After completing these tests, Dream Chaser was moved to NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida for the final phase of integration and pre-launch preparations. This process includes final system checks, integration with its launch vehicle, and finalizing its thermal protection. Dream Chaser's first mission is expected to launch soon on United Launch Alliance's Vulcan Centaur rocket. It will carry approximately 7,800 pounds of cargo to the International Space Station. This mission will mark a major milestone for Dream Chaser and Sierra Nevada Corporation, as it demonstrates the viability of a spacecraft that combines spaceflight capabilities with the ease of an airplane-style landing. Unlike SpaceX's rapid development and Boeing's prolonged struggles, Dream Chaser has steadily advanced, offering a unique solution in NASA's lineup of space transport options. Meanwhile, SpaceX is also in the final stages of preparing for the next launch of its Starship vehicle. The Federal Aviation Administration has granted SpaceX the necessary launch license, clearing a significant regulatory hurdle. The company is planning to conduct this launch by the end of November 2024. The upcoming launch aims to build upon previous test flights, focusing on achieving a successful ascent, stage separation, and controlled landing of both the Super Heavy Booster and the Starship Upper Stage. That's all for today's video. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, and we hope to see you in the next one.